All right. Okay, guys. So for today, we are going to do uh, basically installing Windows subsystem, uh, Win the Linux systems onto your Windows, uh, as described on the chat. So let me share my screen first. Okay. So first, let me explain to you what WSL is. So basically, uh, if you have a Windows computers, uh, you don't have a Linux or, uh, or Mac computers, uh, this is a way for you to uh, install a Linux environment uh, or they, what they call it, a uh, uh, Unix, uh, yeah, Linux environment into your computer so that you can do all this uh, command line things or bash shell. So in, the Windows systems, the equivalents of Windows systems would be CMD. So this is the command prompt for Windows. Uh, there's also another thing, another one called PowerShell, which is something that I'm not too familiar with. Uh, but essentially, I think for the PowerShell, it do the same thing where you can just navigate around using Linux command line. But for today cases, we are going to uh, install an alternative to PowerShell, which is a WSL in this case. So, what's the benefit of using uh, WSL in your in your computer on your computers? Uh, so, if you are <coughs> basically starting out as a, a, a software developer, so you'll be if and you decided to work for a company. Usually, a lot of them would use uh, either Mac or Linux systems. So uh, they use use them to basically do all sort of uh, version controls or uh, uh, scriptings and all this thing. So uh, having this on your systems would benefit a lot. So uh, in this case, if you uh, on the chat, I actually provided the uh, provided uh, the link to the installation process with uh, so it's on Microsoft.com. If you prefer to do it via YouTube, there's also a video, it's a really quick one, <clears throat> and it's a really easy one. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to go through the same process of what they explain on the YouTube, so you can just follow along. Mm -hmm. So to begin, uh, let's check your, make sure you check your versions of your uh, Windows that is the same versions. Uh, it's the latest version. So if you haven't updated your computers for a long time, now is a good time to update it. <laughs> Um, Windows so 10, can, uh, sorry, Windows 10. Windows 10 can, yeah, can, can, uh, no problem, no problem. No, it doesn't have to be Windows 11. Okay. So, um, so yeah, just uh, click on setting, uh, start settings, and then you go to, uh, I believe it's called systems, and then about. <coughs> If your version is uh, 21 or 20, then you're fine. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11. I think as long as your version is 20 or 21, it should be okay. Uh, let me know if it's yours is uh, not 21 or 20. 21 uh, H2. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that means it's the latest. Uh. So in that case, um, next we're going to go start and then we're going to type Oops, uh, we're going to type uh, CMD. So you're going to find this app called Command Prompt. And then uh, for Windows 10, you probably have to right click it and then um, run as administrator. So it will prompt you to whether you want to make changes. So you have this. Now you're actually under, you, you are an admin for this uh, terminal. Command Prompt, sorry. So the next thing to do is to type WSL dash dash install. So uh, if you go to the uh, uh, the documentation that I sent to you on the chat, it will ask you to do this. So essentially, you just type this in WSL dash dash install, and you should do it for you. So enter. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Uh, WSL uh, usage argument. Mm. 
Hmm. Okay. Installing virtual ma virtual machine platform. Machines. Yeah, it, it should be. It should give you that uh setting lah. Mm. So, but for my cases, is uh, did I type something wrong? Or do you have it on your PC already? Yeah, probably have it on the PC. <laughs> yeah, I oh. think that's why. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, um, but how do I check the versions? Some it's like WSL. So. First time installing a console will open. You ask you to decompress. Uh, let me check if. Uh, WSL list. Ah uh, yeah, install already. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, it should prompt you to ask you to install the uh, Linux systems. So once it's finished install, you just have to reboot your com. So basically, mm -hmm. restart your com, and then uh, if you want to do it now, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll stay on here until you're done. Then you should be able to uh open a terminal to do it mm. so um so once you download. like downloading is it still downloading for you ubuntu ubuntu yes that's the uh one of mm. the linux distros uh the recommended linux distros are, but there's actually a lot of different <coughs> version of it but uh ubuntu is the most general one mm. so um <clears throat> once you install and restart it um i believe you have to go to terminal so basically you have uh, terminal apps and you open it and it should prompt you to set up your ubuntu so in our so in my cases i have already installed uh if you mm. just started out it should prompt you to enter a name and a password so once you do that uh, then you're good to go you can start using your uh, windows sub linux systems on your computer mm -hmm. um so just to make sure that everyone is on the same page um has anyone installed it and still installing uh, downloading downloading okay yeah, still. <clears throat> Okay, that's that's fine. We just wait lah, and then um, so uh, basically, what uh, I'll just briefly explain what you can do with this. Um, having a sub Linux system on your computers allows you to use all sort of uh, bash command. So if you don't know what bash command is, uh, actually there's a uh, materials on Sigma School that talks about it. <coughs> So you go to coding fundamental. Uh, you scroll all the way down to one of the optional optionals uh, system. So CML, uh, it's a command line. So it will teach you how to. So Yi Chang would uh, show you how to use it <coughs> over here. So there's all sort of co uh, commands that you can use. The most basic one is just um, changing directory, printing directory, uh, listing all the directory. So <clears throat> in this case would be like, uh, so if I want to list my, cur uh, my current directory, uh, I will type pwd. So this is my current booking directory. So this, all this, this you can just type clear, and it's going to clear everything away. So uh, by having these terminals on, on your system, you can also do all sort of, uh, so say like um, list my directory, uh, which in this case doesn't have any, I guess. So uh, see list 
slash MNT. So uh, C would be the uh, drivers, the window drivers I have on my system. And here the, the WSL would be the Windows subliner system, the, the, the system that mount into your computer. So in this case, I want to go into my, say, uh, <coughs> my Windows folder. So it would be like CD. CD stands for change changing directory. So CD just MNT slash C. So now I'll be in the C folder. So now I type LS, it should give me a bunch of uh, files that I have on here. So permission is not denied. Um, so I can go into my user. And then let's see what we have. CD, C and call. So you can see all these things that I have. So, so how's how is it so far? Is everything everything still good? Is it still downloading for you, Fili? Uh, uh, done, done downloading. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see, see. You might need to uh, reboot your computer, uh, and then. Um, Requested operation is successful. Changes will not be. Oh no, yeah, reboot. <laughs> I need to reboot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you will probably need to reboot to re to use it. Uh, if you want to reboot now, that's fine. I can wait. Uh, no problem. Oh, uh, okay. Then I'll reboot lah. Yeah. Okay, be right back. I know Jackson's you have uh, Ubuntu's on the system. What about you, Jing Yong? Is Jing Yong here? Or is it left already? No, <laughs> uh, still here, still here. But I'm uh, yeah, having some uh dinner today just before. Oh dinner, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ubuntu, right? Yeah. Have, yeah. have you used it before? Like Ubuntu, I do have it. Oh, um, okay, okay. Because we needed it for our um for one of our classes back then. Ah okay okay yeah wait so so this one relies on Ubuntu because I just now I I'm I heard the WSL is somehow correlated with the Ubuntu is it it's basically so I don't know how to how what's the exact term to explain it basically they mount the uh, Linux system to your computer so you don't have to install Ubuntu to use Linux you can just uh, use mm -hmm. your uh, Windows computer to to do the Linux stuff I see. <laughs> But there is an issues with last time I was doing it. I, there is an issue with the with this one, is that uh, if you try to do the what's it called? Uh, was when I was trying to learn React and I do this uh, create React app, right? There's 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 all these weird things happens that like the the React file doesn't update or anything. Oh. <laughs> so so there's still some sort of like things that doesn't work, make sense. Uh, but at least with this thing, right? I think it will allow the student to complete this part mm. but then there's another thing that is like uh the window power shells which i am not too familiar with i think it's something that is relatively new uh but it can also like take the uh, what's it called the command prompt. The com command prompt uh so mm. like the same linux uh command uh, so like uh i do i do this it will list it up. It's just the way they display is quite different. No? Uh, I yeah. see. True, true. So I guess learning PowerShell is also okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like in my in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, PowerShell mm -hmm. is basically they basically can run stuff what command prompt command prompt can. So it's basically a supercharged command prompt. You uh, see. Yeah. So I mean, like whatever you can run on a on a command prompt, then you can run it on a PowerShell. So it's just I mean, like for me, it's the same, but mm -hmm. there could be more feature that PowerShell offer. Yeah, I see. I see. I see. Because like, uh, I don't know whether if uh, PowerShell can use the the grab command. <laughs> because last time I was trying trying to use this one, it couldn't. I see. Yeah, there's like some grab yeah, and then there's some like curl yeah. commands on right. 
Yeah, the, the grab yeah. one is very useful, <laughs> especially when you're trying to find the specific things in the file and you don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, that, that one is handy, man. <laughs> very handy. Yeah, because I, uh, while I was like going through this, the, this part, right, I don't know whether like there, there isn't exactly like a place where they tell window user where to use it. So like, that's one of the things that maybe we can add into it. Yeah, thanks, Nelson. Definitely yeah. will yeah, look, look into it as well. Yeah, speaking of which, right, since you're doing a session on this, uh, I'm mm -hmm. thinking tomorrow's session, I want to do it on, uh, what is it called again? Sigma hours. No, no, not Sigma hours. Uh, web hook. No, oh, not web hook. Ah, web, web socket. Web socket. Web sockets. Ah, okay. Uh, I think it's worth exploring. Because mm. initially I was thinking of uh, doing the collaborative method things, right? The the project building things. Yes. But uh, because I don't know how many people there's gonna be, so I just like maybe I can do this. <laughs> it uh, still be helpful, uh, Yeah. True. True. Yeah, I, I think that one we definitely we explore it next month onwards. Uh, I, I'm preparing some templates for it already. So hopefully everyone can use it, uh, then we can build together. Okay. Mm. In in fact, right, I'm thinking of uh, exploring ideas of competition. Uh, so let's see. Mm, let's, let, let's see. Let's see if we can come up. <laughs> I mean like let's see if we can explore this uh, in some of our sessions in maybe next month or like few few more, few more weeks from now. Because mm. yeah. like, because like, uh, it's it would be nice to have them exposed to, like, uh, collaborative projects where they can actually, um, like, pull projects from Git repository and then push it, merge it back, like, so everyone get to practice it. You know, just something simple, I guess. Oh yes, very very true. Let's just wait for Fitly. Hmm. Let me play around with this. Um... Mm. 
have you like completed all of, all of the courses nelson e, i have completed 79 <laughs> percent ah yeah because I, I recently i've been like busy applying jobs so uh mm -hmm. i have like another interview two interviews coming up on friday so it's like i'm busy preparing all this thing but uh i was hoping to because i wanted to try to clone uh do the spotify thing uh by myself without looking through the videos but uh it's just too busy uh, uh, i'm also planning to do the final project soon how how, <laughs> how do you find them I mean, like are they easy to follow or which one like the spotify? I mean, like, yeah no no i mean like uh, like generally it so for me like i personally enjoy reading yeah uh, so like uh <clears throat> so i i much prefer to read than actually to watch videos so in in my cases uh before i was doing this i was doing this uh audience projects i don't know if you have heard of it before so um let me log in hey. GitHub. So like uh where is the uh path? This one. <clears throat> so what they do is like they, they put a lot of things onto it. So say if I want to learn more about uh DOMs, right? They they, they don't have actually like videos to follow so they just give you like a lesson overviews and then ah. uh, and then they ask you to do exercises assignment and then they sometimes they would show videos uh, but what i really enjoy is that they have this additional resources so say so, like this is like optionals but uh i would just click on it and then just learn it from there i see like, this, yeah so uh so for sigma school i think um it really depends on who who are you targeting like in terms of audience wise because i know that uh there's a lot of beginners in the, in this group so some of them might prefer to use uh like videos teaching over reading so i don't know uh, but for now i think um it, it, so overall the the curriculum for this one is i think it's quite okay it is enough for you to learn how to do uh to how to do something but maybe not very details into it uh so yeah it's nice yeah but uh it's something that i also told derek about it uh because uh <clears throat> like for example if you talk about uh i think there's one part where they ask us to do like a tic-tac-toe thing with node.js i th i thought that was quite challenging <laughs> yeah but it's nice that uh you you are easily to be, like to be able to understand yeah, yeah the, because the, I, I sort of like <laughs> i i stuck on like a tutorial for the past two years so like i'll just keep using to doing like html css javascript all the time so just like uh all, the, all these things start to just become part of, uh, practice already <laughs> I wonder where Fitly is. Um, let me. Let me check on him. Uh. Yeah, Nelson. Mm -hmm. You say you've been stuck in a tutorial, how is it, the last two years? Uh, I started doing all this like during COVID. 
Uh, so like uh, I, I the 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 first curriculum that I was started with is the the Odin projects. Oh, so like um. Actually, not not this one. It's actually uh, free code camp. I was doing free code camp first, mm. and then I jump into uh, what's it called? There's another there's another one on on the free online resources before I settled down on the Odin projects. I see, but but I think Odin project also came out like quite recent, right? Like six months ago. No, it's quite a long time already. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I apparently see. there's like uh, if you go to their Discord, right? I think they have yeah. like I don't know, like. 20, 30,000 students or all, all around. Oh, wow. Yeah. But uh, what I really like about it is uh, the, the amount of resources they provided. So even mm -hmm. if you don't complete it, right, uh, the, um, the resources they, they provided is a lot. So say, for example, um, I, I didn't actually do the uh, full stack JavaScript. If you want to do like Ruby on RHEL, they only they also have. Uh, mm -hmm. So say like full stack JavaScript. And you go into uh, intermediate HTML. There's all these topics that uh, actually this one is not justified. Um, this one. <clears throat> so there's all this like ES module webpack that uh, that it didn't teach you in the Sigma school, right? You can actually just go and explore it. So uh, classes uh, we got teach. Asynchronous. So, so this is where I learned all the async and the await thing. So, oh. I work with API. <clears throat> so, like, uh, I was thinking that to suggest it to Derek that, like, uh, so maybe add something, some kind of like a learning outcome or objective for a particular uh, section of the course, so that mm. the student would know what they are going to learn or mm. what kind of information they're looking for. So, like. <clears throat> And then uh, sometimes they would, in the end, they would give you like a knowledge checks to see whether if you can explain what's an API and all those things. This is something that um, I think if we implement into like the Sigma school would be quite useful. I don't know. I, I personally find it useful because uh, sometimes when I go into a certain course, right, I don't really know like uh, what exactly am, am I going to, I'm planning to learn or like uh, how to say like uh, whether if I have learned enough, you know. Mm. Yeah. So uh the Odin project is a good place to reference uh, cause, and they, they they emphasize on reading documentations and then <laughs> yeah. So oh. they just click it and they guess all oh, this it's all it's usually is MDN, uh, but you see sometimes they have a very useful one. So the other one I found very useful is uh in, where is it? Odin projects. Uh JavaScript. Oh yeah, this one. This one, this tutorial is really nice. Ooh. So say like uh, I async, async a wait. Uh, like I personally find this tutorial very, very nice uh, because in the end of at the end they give you like a task for you to practice to see whether you understand the concept or not. And if you don't understand it, you can just look at the solution. But mm, yeah, I see. Oh, that's really cool yeah and uh they even have a section that teach react if i'm not mistaken like, uh, like this one node.js node.js and then uh they teach you like some backend stuff mongodb express mongoose uh authentic authentications apis more apis testing and then hey where's the react one <laughs> I think React is uh, under JavaScript. Yeah. There's a section that is, yeah, React.js. Wow. Yeah. So if you like feel like learning, you can always come here and look at it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh, quite a lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's like, I guess, like, read this, 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 and this. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. But for React, right? If you wanted to learn, uh, don't use this one. Use the uh, the beta, uh, the React beta documentation because mm. apparently that one is more latest. Uh, beta dot. That's right here. This beta. one uses a lot uh, latest uh, technology. They still they they still building it lah. Ninety five percent complete, but mm. I usually learn from here. I see. 
uh, documentation. Those uh, I remember I saw it's uh, like a uh, anime, no, not anime lah. But uh, do you do you follow Joma Tech? Joma, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, so Joma Tech was like showing showcasing like some some uh, uh some uh parody at that yeah then he showed oh this guy got superpower and his superpower is he's he's actually able to read documentation at this young age <laughs> <laughs> i think if you yeah if you can if you can understand documentation you can learn it really fast yes like, uh, it's just very overwhelming to read at, the, at first because you see like oh what is this what's all this like uh what is using component and mm. <laughs> yes yeah but but honestly la, i feel um like because last time right um i did certain projects and then i didn't know there was such thing called documentation uh, yeah. so i i went to search this uh chart that i tried to implement and the only way i could know how it was right was i had to like um uh what's it called i had to work i had to reverse engineer it so i'd be like okay this line of code does this what happens if i modify this line just by a little bit you know yeah uh, yeah so I, I did that like for the most thing i'm like oh my gosh I don't know. <laughs> then then when i stumbled across uh chart js right and then i saw the documentation there i'm like oh my gosh i don't care how detailed it is. this is so good man it yeah guides you and everything yeah so so it's like i think once you reach a certain stage right you'll be like yeah documentation is just the way to go man and usually when i'm like exploring right i'll just I'll just look at it and say, oh, there's there's not as this guy and just look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So something that I want to learn, actually, uh, but I, I have too much to learn at the moment. <laughs> no worries. I think I think this one may be covered in the course. Uh. Not sure. In the course. Uh. OK. Yeah. Mm. Generally, TypeScript is like more like a uh, JavaScript. It's just like there's some like added stuff. Yeah, it's, pro it's probably like uh, it's gonna be simple though. If you like, if you know JavaScript, then it's gonna be simple. I mean, like it's gonna be easy for you to adapt. It's just right. that you're you're adding some type checking. That's that's just it. It's basically what I understand is that they, if you learn TypeScript, you uh, if you will try to build something with TypeScript, it is tend to be less buggy. I guess I don't. Yeah, know. yeah, it is. It is because yeah. like you 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 will expect the kind of like the type of data that you're expecting yeah for example yes. you're you you expect the back end to give you a string so so in the front end you can just know that the data is coming as a string so if you if you use like javascript that like the data can be like anything right mm -hmm. because you don't like explicitly tell them like what kind of data you are getting so yeah. that's why yeah so it's just i mean like like that that's the the main purpose of typescript thing. TypeScript, okay yeah and i i believe uh angular also runs on typescript right it's like strictly just typescript no, I, i'm not sure about that though <laughs> i mean like i i used to like see angular but they they don't like really attract me that so i see i see <laughs> i don't i don't even like like go into it i just know view and react that's 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 just it ah okay mm -hmm. yeah, the code samples is are written using typescript yeah yeah that everything's gonna be like easy if you know uh javascript mm -hmm. especially in like in this uh modern frameworks you have view you have react it's gonna be like uh, i mean like there's gonna be some differences but at the end you will see the same things i see because it's javascript or typescript so because yeah. i i had an interview with one of the company uh two weeks ago so mm -hmm. the, the 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 they they have me do like the team viewer thing and then coding on their ubuntu ubuntu and then they want me to do the fist bus uh questions and then but it's the file is in typescript so it's in typescript oh, it is, and they say oh you can just type javascript into it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you're like uh, you're uh, like you're I looking am, for a job in in this field now? Yeah, I'm. I'm started already because I oh. um, I I would initial the initial plan is before by the end of this year, but uh, uh, I am hoping to do it earlier because uh, at the moment um, I I think I saw I already know how to do use a uh, the view and then some React, but uh, 
<clears throat> just trying to apply and see whether if I can get a job right here. I see. Yeah, yeah. it's worth trying though. <clears throat> it hasn't hurt. I, yeah, I get a couple no calls, but there's a couple calls, so I get I guess I'm on the right track. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good luck though on that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I hope uh, I got good news coming back, right? In uh, one two weeks from now. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Actually, actually, they offer one of one of them offer, but they offer me too low. I just don't want to take it. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Uh, how how much is too low? If you don't mind me asking. So so basically, uh, I'm not supposed to disclose the name, but basically, they they want me to work from nine to six thirty. Right. But uh, it's lower than my current pay. Uh, my, my current pay isn't a lot actually it's a small like uh but for mechanical engineers we don't get paid a lot but uh yeah it just it, it didn't feel very like it, it's not very how to say attractive <laughs> uh, and i believe the the office is located in uh where is it called? where is it right here? i don't know if it's like tddi or somewhere else like, oh, like oh, okay. a place where there's like a, a lot of cars and jam I, people, my friend told me like don't don't leave there <laughs> don't go there or something yeah, it's very dense area. Bro, I, I live here, man. It's, it's <laughs> Oh, you live in TTDI? I mean, I live around TTDI. And around. when it comes to making some U-turns, like, oh my gosh, the bottlenecks will kill you. And the, <laughs> the, the, the jams and all that. Yeah. But a, a lot of the jobs that I apply uh, tend to have office in Bangsa South. Bangsa South or Mid Valley. I think that's yeah. the, the tech. The tech. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> of... Uh tech zone I, I would say because all, a lot of my friends uh, are currently working there around oh. the south yeah they're working like uh in uh at tashengo tashengo digital tashengo yeah yeah i mean like it's basically located at Bangsa south i mean like it's kind of a tech area for me la. silicon valley of yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean like uh we we, we probably know like the silicon valleys of uh of malaysia is probably like sabujaya right but it's kind of far though yeah it is it doesn't make sense to do it in cyber giant <laughs> yeah i mean like i mean like it can be a silicon valley but they need to like industrialize it more mm -hmm. yeah true true i mean like i i would love to work outside kl because i don't like the environment here i mean like, it's kind of like very noisy and very uh, like heavy traffic you know i would love like to like work outside yeah, that's for sure. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, I also got one offer in um, Puchong, but the the job itself is more towards backend. Uh, they use mm -hmm. Java, uh, but I know Java, but I don't. I'm not familiar with like Spring Boots and all this yeah. like, uh, framework for Java, so I just didn't take it. Because he said that uh, uh, he wanted he wanted me to try, uh, and then. And then I say, okay, but uh, I have like a two to three months of probation. I don't think I can learn that fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, like, what do you like? Which, which side do you prefer on? Do you prefer front end or back end? I, end, right? I like the logic part of it. So mm -hmm. uh, when I do coding, I, I, I don't really enjoy like building like this very beautiful interface and all this thing. I much mm -hmm. prefer like linking like the, the, the system of it so basically uh, this is how to do it but so maybe i'll tend to prefer more to a backside but but since i haven't even touched on that side yet it's yeah uh, it's hard to tell you know i see but i think that if you wanted to be like a good back-end developer you also need to sort of understand the front end before you do back-end as well <laughs> yeah yeah but uh i'm definitely interested to touch on back-end uh no js and then maybe eventually uh uh golang go mm. i think that's a pretty interesting language itself uh, so yeah definitely uh covering it uh, in the back end mm. oh by the way mm. okay should I, should I cover okay I, I know, I, i'll cover later this one this one i'll cover later after the recording okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, some spoilers is the back end uh chapter some very yeah. very interesting projects very interesting <laughs> I don't know if Fitly is coming back though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we just proceed first, and then yeah, you can watch okay. the record. Okay. So basically, um, so uh, I'm just share my screen again. There's not much to talk about, but rather than it's just I wanted to show the other audience that how you can create uh folders on your laptop. 
uh, on the computers with uh, command line. So, uh, so in this case, we do like this uh, desktop, right? CD desktop. This. So in order to create document, you type mkdir. So say uh, test, and when you do it, it should pop up right here. So if you want to move into the folder, you type cd test. It's, right now it's inside the folder already. And if you wanted to uh, create like a like a file, so say for example, um, you wanted to start coding in this folder, you can type like uh, like uh, touch. So instead of doing like the right click uh, new files, you can just do touch. Uh, say index.html, and then it will pop up index.html, and then uh, you can. Turn on you can uh, turn on your computer uh, Visual VS Code by typing code and dot pop up. So yeah, that's and then you have it. Uh, save. There's the this is the index.html and you can just start coding with this. So that's pretty much uh, it for today. If you are interested to learn more about command line argument? You can go to the optional course line uh, coursework under here, and there will be a bunch of ways on telling you how to move directory, how to delete files, and yeah, you're good to go. So yeah, that's it for the session for tonight. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or just uh, send message to me on the Sigma School thing and I can try to answer it. Yeah. It's, it's funny just now, it's like this. I, I think I think right now I can turn off the recording already. <laughs> <laughs> turn off, yeah. Okay.